Fortnite has been out for almost a year and it's pretty safe to say at this point that the game is dead, or rather coming to an end. I hate that this appears to be the case but there's no denying it, especially from the low player count, the lack of general content and support for the game. I feel like at this point Raid is now at a point where it feels like it could be possibly fully abandoned. Which is a shame because I actually quite enjoyed playing Raid, I have over 250 hours in it, it wasn't anything groundbreaking, no far from it, but that doesn't make it a terrible game. In fact it can do the exact opposite for certain players like myself. I never really played Payday 2 for the sense of challenge, I just played it for the sense of fun. The kind of person I am is I'm someone who will play PvE games for the fun of it, not for the challenge or for a certain meta or to look impressive. And Payday 2 ended up becoming one of those kind of games. If you didn't play on the highest difficulty or play with a certain build, you couldn't have any fun out of it. And it just become confusing over the years because they added so much stuff on top of anything else that I kind of just wanted to stop playing it. Raid however was more simplistic and enjoyable. But if you like playing Payday for the challenge or for the achievements and that kind of stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. Like there's nothing wrong with me playing Raid. But we're not here to talk about what game's better, we're here today to talk about what the hell happened to Raid. Well it's simple if you think about it really, the game launched in a bit of a shit state, only promoted within Payday 2 and charging far too much for it. Obviously from that alone it wasn't going to do as well as they expected. But interestingly enough, there's actually more that happened after the launch of Raid that not only caused issues for the game, but also caused issues for the developers as well. And to myself, I personally played Starbreeze for this and how they handled it. Let me explain. After Raid launched, the game received a ton of backlash from the community. Due to how the game was promoted, all it was was really a mini event in Payday 2 which led up to the launch of Raid, which is fine as it's obviously a Payday type game, but that's all the marketing they had for Raid. There was no proper adverts across the media, they just expected players to immediately jump from Payday over to Raid. But when this fell flat on its face, Starbreeze did the only thing they could do, which was bail. They didn't even attempt to do any real damage control, not until around February which is when they did the right thing and dropped the price to around $20. A price that Raid should have been since day one, but with Starbreeze they think they're AAA developers for some odd reason and they just went with about 40 to 50. But before they decided to change the price drop, something else happened with Lion Game Lion which put them into real trouble. Over the Christmas holidays some rumours had come to light that Lion Game Lion had had a bit of a financial situation due to the mess of the launch of Raid, leading to a bunch of layoffs. At the time there was a bunch of information going around all over the place on Reddit, but trying to look back into this on Reddit, it appears that most of the information has been removed. From what I remember though, about 20 people were supposedly let go around Christmas and then 10 were let go at the start of Raid's launch. Thankfully however it's not all in the dark because my friend Tonis made a video of this over in the time when it actually became a thing. I'll leave a link to the description below below and put a little note at the top right of the video if you'd like to investigate further. But if you'd like a brief rundown, Starbreeze took a bit of a PR control moment claiming neither LGL or the game was dead itself, and then moved all the discussions regarding the game's demise into an off topic forum to try and ignore the questions, or do the better option and made them look even worse which was to silence people. I remember arguments going a bit overboard on the discord and steam forum, with myself included asking for LGL to give a proper response to this directly instead of the moderators trying to quiet people. We did get a response from both Arash and Ilya but at the time it wasn't the most appropriate response. To give a summary of what they said it was just it's none of your concern and that you should just move on and not bring up the question of what happens now with Raid. Which in some situations, sure that can be fine to look over, but for a game that players have spent almost £40 on, yeah people are going to start asking questions. And when you're claiming to have been super transparent up to this point and that it's no one's concern, you're basically telling people to shut up and it doesn't really work in your favour. But going back to Starbreeze, apparently they had their own money problems as well. Apparently due to the launch of Raid being so bad they had to end up selling some of their shares and selling the rights to Dead by Daylight back to Behaviour. And they made about 30 million dollars from this sale. However I don't recall any of this money being portioned off the line game line to help them try and fix the game or get some extra help on board temporarily. Which is a bit of a dishonourable move Starbreeze, especially since LGL did a lot for your popular title Payday 2. Just so I don't fall on my face making any false claims with that remark, I did ask Ilya the other day for what LGL actually helped produce or make for Payday 2 and this is the following response I got. Driving, parachute, dismember of the cloakers, the fire stuff, the barbecue weapons, 64 bit and bipod. That's really it in terms of systems, but then also golden grin and the bomb heists. Some of the car heists too, but that was a collab with Overkill. 
So from that alone it gives you a rough idea of the potential LGL have for making new mechanics for an engine that's worse than a text based RPG game. And I honestly believe they've shown this with some of the features they've added to Raid. There's stuff like mounted LMGs that work as intended, usable AA guns, better driving mechanics compared to Payday, multiple animation sets for weapons, timed throwables instead of just a click and shit throw, and then there's probably more I haven't even mentioned. Also before I move on can I just say for the record, I've given Ilya so much shit in the past year calling them out on stuff and claiming them not to be as transparent as they should have been. Not only did he listen to this and improve upon it, the guy is actually one of the most down to earth developers I've ever spoken to and he's actually a pretty cool guy. So no hit on you directly Ilya, it's just you weren't as transparent as you said you were but you have addressed this and you have been more transparent recently so props to you on that one. Anyway moving on, with that information now out in the open, the final question appears. With the layoffs and the Nightmare Line game line having counted in the past year, What's actually been added? And unfortunately that answer is not a lot. Well in regard to levels anyway. At launch raid didn't really have much of an option to offer in the sense of levels. There was a total of 9 raids, 2 outlaw raids and then finally 2 operations. What didn't help either was that certain raids were either borderline unfair or just flat out tedious to play. Raids like Hunter, Wiretap and Gold Rush come into mind. Wiretap had little to no cover making hold up points almost a certain death sentence on hard and above, especially when the objective is to stop people blowing up the barricades. However, Gold Rush just takes far too long for such a little reward, especially since the gold doesn't even equate to anything in this raid, and Hunters is, well, to be blunt, boring. It's a fairly open map with three camps placed around the area and all you need to do is kill them and leave. While yes it's a very short raid, it's just boring to play. And recording this footage was the first time I've even touched Hunters since close to the release date. But thankfully not all raids are this bad. Raids like Odin's Fall and Strongpoint are really fun to play as its main focus is on killing Nazis in a driven way that isn't as basic as Hunters. But going back to what I said earlier, the total amount of raids offered in this game was not enough to go by. But with the game's price dropping to about $20, you definitely get more out of the money you've paid now. But so far we've only seen an addition of two raids. Yeah, two. And one of them isn't even that good in my opinion. In fact, it just points out the major flaw with the direction raid appears to be going. But they did add more than just the two raids. We've had some other features, as well as a much needed rework to recon that gives you health upon each kill with a sniper rifle. And then a few bug fixes and tweaks, like multiple animation sets or weapons that actually have grips so you hold them now and then finally a bunch of new weapons. So we've roughly had 3 new shotguns, 2 new sniper rifles, 2 LMGs, a bunch of grenades, an event melee weapon and 3 sidearms. With 2 feeling quite unique, one being a sword off double barreled shotgun and then the other being a silenced pistol known as the well rod. With grenades only one is unique which is a decoy coin which sadly wasn't just called a decoy. Now what's interesting about this decoy coin is the mechanics it introduced to stealth. Rage originally had a fairly straightforward stealth system and for what Raid is it made it more enjoyable when compared to payday. There's no cameras or pages but the guards AI pathing made up for it. However with the decoy coin you can now throw it like a grenade and wait for a guard to go inspect it to either kill them or just slip past undetected. Now this is an interesting idea and it's a mechanic I welcome with open arms but unfortunately the bugs that were introduced with this update didn't give the decoy coin a good start. And before I go into explaining that let me just give you a quick talk about the weapon that came with the coin. So the well rod was originally cut content but was brought back due to high demand. It's a good pistol however However the animations are still broken and to no surprise haven't been addressed as of writing this. Besides that really the rest are fine, nothing really stands out as much, however it's shocking to see that they still haven't added a bloody Luger. Like seriously, how, how can you have a World War 2 game and not have a Luger? That's like committing a crime I swear. As for the cosmetic side of things as well, we've had a total of 2 new outfits and that's kind of it. Cosmetics aren't really a priority in this game, so there's no real complaints here from me, but maybe a generic war outfit for each character would be a nice choice. Mainly so River can start wearing a fucking helmet and hide that horrible head texture. Seriously, it's like a shining dome of just crap. It looks like really bad clay, but it's hardened to a point where you just can't change it anymore, so it's stuck like that forever. But enough about Revit's ugly fucking head, we've still got some raids to look into, and with there only being two new additions to the game, I will be going in order of what came first. So the first raid to be added to the game since it was launched was Countdown. Countdown sees you escorting a payload full of explosives for a missile silo deep within an enemy bunker. The majority of the raid goes at a bit of a snail's pace though as you keep to the payload slowly moving from point A to point B with a couple of obstacles in the way. Although a majority of these obstacles seem to be the lockpicking minigame. 
and I really don't know why, it's kind of weird. But once you get down the long hallway, which feels like an eternity at some points, you arrive at the silo. From here, you move the dynamite into position and then prep the rocket to launch while also closing off the hatches, causing a chain of reactions to cause that bunker to blast sky high. Once you've done this, you just make your way back to the exit, running through the same areas you sluggishly run through earlier. Overall, while it sounds a bit boring, Countdown is in my eyes actually a really fun raid. The level design itself is definitely unique in the sense of location. It reminds me a little bit of the style of Odin's Fall, and as I've said in streams in the past, Odin's Fall is my favourite raid to date, so you can kind of see why I like this one as well. But then we get to the second raid however, and I'm going to be completely honest, I really didn't like Kelly all that much. Kelly gives you the objective of stealing gold for the fourth time now, but in a smaller bank compared to what it is in Gold Rush. However, compared to the other raids involving gold, it is actually possible to stealth this. But since Kelly was in the same update as what introduced the new stealth mechanics into raid, Stealth has been broken. Making some missions near impossible to stealth fully, you can still stealth Kelly technically, but you have to have a team with you mainly just to kill everyone on site because everybody's alerted really quickly but also to stop other guards from respawning. The respawning guards feature is a feature that was requested for a while because it gives a bit more challenge to the game, but this has now been retrofitted into previous raids which is fine, but the well rod reload and the stealth is still broken which kind of just shows that their priority is not in the right place. But I can't help but admit that Kelly was just a really disappointing update, and all it's done for me is to point out what's wrong with raid, and it's a pretty simple thing to explain really. So to be blunt as anything, we're all fully aware that Raid is a clone or a reskin. There's literally no point arguing this at this point, but Raid had the potential to stand out a fair bit, but the developers took it in a direction keeping it so close to how paid is as a structure, it just didn't help with its demise. Take this for example, a majority of the raids are focused on killing Nazis and stopping Hitler's plans, like the film Inglorious Bastards. However, there's raids that are focused on stealing gold and they really just don't fit into this game whatsoever. I mean, outlaw raids are fine and they should be left at that, but stuff like Gold Rush and Trainwreck and including Kelly now are just too heavily focused on moving gold over long distances and it's really boring. Take Payday 2 again, for example. One of the things that put me off over time was just that high school were going from being creative on the sense of objectives to focusing on how much you can get out in an allotted time. But that's a heisting game for you, that's kind of the point of Payday. In Raid, however, especially in the trailer, it clearly shows that you're meant to be putting a halt in Hitler's plans and fighting the Nazis. If you want an even quicker summary of it, Raid should be more like this, and less of that. More bang bang, less gold crap. One thing to definitely give Raid praise about is how unique the levels feel until gold gets involved. A majority of them have objectives like storming a bunker, shooting down planes, planting mines to blow up an army convoy, and many more. Having a long ass transport of gold though just rips the fun out of the game, and for the love of god LGL, if you plan to make more raids, please do not have a focus of gold anymore. You're really good at making a bloodbath, but transporting gold is definitely a no-go. In fact, thanks to Raid, I've actually been in a bit of a World War II game spree, playing old games like Call of Duty 2, the old Medal of Honors, and even Brothers in Arms, and there's been a few moments in these games where I've gone, you know what, that would actually really work in Raid. So I thought I'd give you a couple of examples or suggestions to see what kind of stuff would be fitting for Raid down the line. Firstly, there's a mission in Call of Duty 2 where you climb up a half-destroyed tower and try to stop Nazis from placing mortars and blasting your squad into pieces. Maybe have a raid that starts halfway through into a shit show where you need to either fall back to a village or a town and either find an escape route or just hold back until reinforcements arrive. Another could be trying to capture a specific point like a bridge for example before the Nazis can destroy it so allies can get across later on. Or for a very basic raid, I'm going to mention a game that never actually saw the light of day, but feels like it could have been very similar to Raid anyway. So remember earlier I mentioned Brothers in Arms? Well, a few years back they announced a game called Brothers in Arms Furious 4. A game focused on four mercenaries trying to kill as many Nazis as possible in a highly non-fiction setting of the Second World War. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? I thought so. In the trailer, it's set in a pub somewhere in the middle of Berlin, where the four players just go to town on the Nazis, killing everyone inside. Seriously, LGL, make that into a short raid. Just let me kick over a table, blow up a group of Nazis, and just go to hell with an MG42. And this is another option, Starbreeze, you actually give LGL the mapping tools to release to the public, and I'll make the thing the damn self. Overall though, it's a shame what happened to Raze. It was obvious that this was going to be the case since launch, but I really wish we'd got more out of it now than what we're seeing at the moment. If you were to ask me though if I wanted to play Payday or Raid, each time, hands down, I'll say Raid. Not just because it's a World War II game where the Payday is done to death or that I hate Overkill, it's for one simple reason, and it's a reason that people seem to look over a lot. It's fun. And on that final note, I think this chapter of Raid on this channel, or just in general, is over. I'll still play the game from time to time, and maybe stream it if people want to. And I do hope Ilya and the rest of LGL are the best, and I really do hope they prove me wrong with what I've just said in this video. And maybe they'll get the game to a better state. 
And if they do, they better add a fucking Luger. LGL, I make a promise now, if you add a Luger in the next update or just sometime soon, I'll make a video covering the game again. <laughs>